Alrighty folks, uh, so welcome to this tutorial, which is going to be a, sort of a model along. Uh, I encourage you guys to watch first, and then I'm going to be providing orthographic views of the finished model, so you guys can follow along after the fact. Um, this is great if you're learning Blender, or if you're just learning modeling in general, and you want uh, more practice with it, um, or just uh, watch and hang out. But I'm going to make this little snail. And uh, I don't really know what it's going to look like yet, because I just found some cute images online. And I'm just going to cartoonify them. And uh, yeah, that's what's up. So I'm going to start with the curve. Uh, I've also done this little doodle ahead of time just to help myself here. But yeah, this will be um, a lecture where I'm going to try and explain modeling principles as I'm doing them. I'm going to try and explain the choices I'm making as I'm making them and why I'm making them. So this is also going to be a little bit on uh, design as well, but uh, mostly it's going to be a modeling tutorial. So uh, essentially what I'm doing right now, um, I'm going to speed through the settings and stuff I'm doing with curves because if you are new to curves as well, there's another video you should watch ahead of time, which is um, modeling with curves in Blender that I have. But um, this is going to be a little bit more assuming you have that background already. So essentially what I'm doing right now is just adding thickness to it, of course. And I just want to roughly get this into shape just to block this out, just to kind of get a better idea of what it's going to look like from all views. It's not going to be, I'm not going to be able to perfectly follow it just because of the nature of curves, but as long as I can get it pretty close at this time, that'll help me out. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's decent. That's decent. Okay. And then... Something like this is a, a snail is great too to practice with because you can actually completely block this out with curves. Honestly, most characters you can. Uh, generally, 2B, 2B shapes are very common in characters, so I definitely recommend always starting with a curve and utilizing them because they are definitely a better way to block stuff out. And I'm also doing Alt S for scaling. Um, it's also here if you forget the hotkey. Um, so just trying to kind of imagine what it would look like from different views and just kind of posing it cute. I also, this is also sort of like a semi-neutral pose that I'm going for. Um, I'm kind of imagining this is like a game character. Uh, essentially that's kind of the, the amount of density that I'm building for. Um, so I wouldn't, this final result I'm aiming for, I probably wouldn't use this in animation, but it would be, like I said, it would be fine for games. And I think this is going to change a bit because this is like quite a lot rounder than I want. And I definitely want the face to be more oval. But yeah, we're just going to get roughly into shape and see what we get. Okay, those are decent. I can honestly just mirror these. That's fine. Okay, and then the shell also honestly makes sense to do it with the curves. These are going to be a little tr tricky and crashy. Uh, to start with, it'll definitely take some manual cleanup. I didn't mean to key that. And actually, just before I forget, because changing the resolution is often something I forget to do. Okay, so, okay, hang on. Let's make sure this is oriented correctly first. So if this is the bottom of the shell, where the, the snail, this, this part here, the snail's going in this part, then this needs to curve outwards. And it also kind of curves like to the right. It's kind of like on an angle, sort of like that. So, um, kind of just eyeballing it from these two images together. Okay, so it's gonna be something like this. Okay, now I can start to spiral it. So that's definitely the orientation I want. Uh, I just, the thickness is like all over the place now because I haven't adjusted that at all yet. So, and these lines are also, <laughs> I don't need, I don't need these anymore. They're very distracting. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So I'm probably going to have to manually like puff out this section here because if I make it too big, let's see what happens if I make it, because from the front too, I also want to get like probably, I'm trying to, try to imagine what it would look like, probably something like that. 
And then the snail probably needs to come quite a lot wider just to compensate for that because it's like looking at this image too it kind of looks like the snail's side goes well, it might be roughly in line maybe maybe it's not quite as far so that, that could be relatively accurate but that's definitely because of this uh, being the wrong size so if I shrink that make this a tighter spiral kind of push this together because I need to get this down, this piece down here. This can't be as low. Yeah, it's got to be more like that. And then if I can kind of push this out just to get that round silhouette from the front, that would probably work. And then, yeah, honestly, this could go quite a lot bigger because there's, there's a decent, looking at the silhouette here is kind of like how I'm measuring how this, this, this part right here. And it's still a little deep, so I could even puff that up even more, probably. And if it's like crashing through down here, I'm not too worried about that, because I feel like I'm going to end up deleting a lot of these faces anyway. I'm going to have to pull this up a little bit more. And I'm probably going to want to like, uh, yeah, here we go, do this just to reorient where the entrance is. Because I think I'm going to need to like have it go around the body just so it looks a lot nicer kind of like kind of like what's happening here because that'll be a lot cuter I want to try and make this very cute little snail okay now we're sticking out too far but pulling it back is helping with that silhouette quite a bit so let's just pull honestly could probably just pull this out even more yeah okay we're getting there we're getting there let me pull that out even more and then this down and then this up Okay, there we go. All right, so we're getting the round shape now. This is probably be fatter, and then I'll need to. This is a crashy mess. Definitely, that's gonna have to be manual for sure. This is gonna have to be manual. But want to try. The objective is to try and get as far as we can with the curves before reverting to manual. Let's just get rid of that. There's too many points. Now that I've squished it. And another good thing to do with spirals is just to kind of check what the density is that we're dealing with here. It makes it easier to see too where that where that stress and tension is happening in the curve. And the more you fix that before you convert to geometry, like the easier it'll be. So, okay, yeah, I like this kind of like I like that a little droopy. I like that it's not a perfect circle. Um, I like that it's got nice curved at the back, curved here, so that's good. That's all looking nice. Um, the front uh, could probably curve out just a teeny bit more. Yeah, more like that, just to get like the two. I really want this to be higher. I'm torn because from the front I want it to be higher, but from the side I don't. Maybe if I just, maybe it's, I just need to pull these over a bit. And then honestly, probably even get rid of that. That's probably not helping. And then if I scale this up, yeah, it kind of collides with it, kind of covers it, so. If I just push that in, that might help. And then if I push this up, pull this out a little bit. What about this guy? What is this? Nope. Yeah, something like that. Okay. I just ah, want that out just a little bit more. A little bit more. So it's a bit more symmetrical. Just a teeny bit. Plus it does like stick out quite a bit. You know what? Yeah, it does stick out quite a bit farther on this side. I think I just need to like pull this whole thing out doesn't really, t I'm, th I'm thinking of like a, a shell, but like a, a different kind of shell, I mean. And I, it's more like, it's more like this. Yeah, because it like spirals out. So I gotta get that shape in there too. And then probably add more volume here, that might help. Okay, yeah, 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 that's working. Okay, so if we can get this stick out a little bit more, a little bit. I just want to see that, like, just a little bit of hint of spiral from the side, because that's cute. Um, top view is a little janky, but that's okay. It's mostly because of the collapsing happening here, which I need to fix manually. And then uh, let's just adjust this here a little bit. Yeah, something like that. This is probably sticking out too far. I could probably do, honestly, I could probably pull that out even more. And that needs to be thickened, but that's a manual thing. 
Okay, yeah, I mean, there is that separation. The scale, and it's it's probably a little big, honestly. It's probably, yeah, okay, there we go. Now I'm starting to see the like the layers of the spiral a lot more, so that's that's better. That's a clearer silhouette from the side, so that looks nice. Yeah, that works. Okay, cool. I still like that shape. I like I like that shape. Gotta fix that though. Alright, yeah. And I think I'm good with that. Okay, so this is the block out in curves. Um, like I said, you wanna try and get as far as you can with curves. You can ignore like like for example, I ignored the eye little the little little ball here. That's easier to do just with a model. So stuff like that you can ignore. It's not really gonna change the shape anyway. Um, but yeah, once you get that far, what I recommend doing First of all, is naming your collections so you're you're organized here. Uh, get this out of here, and I like having an archive collection where I just duplicate live curves, and that way uh, it's not really something I use too much anymore. But if you ever do need to go back to it, or you've decided to change the design a little bit, maybe it's easier to revert back to the curve. Um, then at least you have that checkpoint, so to speak. So let's go through this in the same order again. Let's start with the snail convert this to mesh. I'm fine with how it looks. And first of all, let's build the like foot of the snail. So this can just straight up be flat. And I want to make sure this is zeroed so that when I input zero here, it's actually going to go to the, f the world zero, you know. And I want these to stick out more. Um, this can also be symmetrical. So let's just do that right away. And, okay, so I want them to probably stick out like that far, something like that. That's cute. Okay. Yeah, a little, because he's also got like, it kind of carries up into like this area. Might help to just like smooth this down. Oh, whoops. Got to enable clipping first. Just smooth that down a little bit. Leave both these together. And then... I'm going to pull this out. I'm also going to start using marking edges so that I can see my design a little more clearly. Uh, normals, turn that on. I'm going to set it to like, usually go with like 100. And now it's like a little more obvious. Uh, there's actually probably too many, too many loopies going that direction. That's a little excessive. Okay, let's go here and set them to parallel. Disable mirror because for whatever reason it doesn't work, uh, which is pretty rude. And then honestly could use a bit more down here. Let's just space these out again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably fine. Okay. And then let's see, let's pull this out more because it probably goes right to the, it's a little, mm, I don't know, it's a little hard to tell, but I imagine snails can vary. Okay. So let's, cap the end here. It's probably easier to cap it first and smooth it down with the grid fill. Um, I want to pick a pattern that's going to keep this center line though. Whoops, I just erased my grid fill. I want to pick a pattern that's going to help me maintain that so that my when I go to mirror it a bunch, it's not going to be a nuisance. Yeah, something like that. Um, honestly, maybe even a bit more. And then let's beef up the tail a little bit. Some, yeah, probably something like that. And then we can pull these guys out a little bit. And I don't really know how far this goes, but now that we've got that set up, can mirror again. Don't forget to enable clipping. I want to keep it pretty simple because like I said, this is the idea for this is like a game character. So I don't want to go too intense with the details because it won't be as cute just want to get this more aligned to that point. Okay, yeah, we'll keep it keep that relatively cartoony because I noticed a lot of snails they kind of have like a bit of this thing going on, but I think that's starting to get like a little too detailed for what I want to do. So, hmm. We'll decide later. I don't know. Okay, can, carrying on. Uh so we got these little Okay, so there's a distinct cuteness that I'm lacking. Um it might be because this nose is too pointy. Let's Let's fix this too. Uh, here we go. And smooth more. More. Okay. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. 
yeah there we go because there's a little his little nubby nose that's really cute i like that okay um honestly i don't even need to do that much with it maybe just like flatten this a little bit ah, ah i forget again i always forget okay let me just flatten that a little bit yeah there we go so i can get kind of like a little bit of a point that's that's a cute silhouette i like that and then actually this posing might be a little a little intense for neutral Could probably release that a little bit do something more like that and then uh, i'm wondering if i want it to curve nah you know what i like i like the way it's curving it feels more natural just exaggerate it a little bit more check the top yeah that's cute that's, that's cute that's cute let's just do that that's nice nice c curve okay lovely what's the resolution on this uh oh yeah it's mm, we can make it six-sided it might be excessive it might be harder if it's really if it's really dense it might be harder to connect to the head and i'll have to up res the, the body a little bit so okay these things are a little bit on top i kind of want to put it in the spot of like where a mustache would be i actually don't fully know what these are i assume they're just face feelers or something but just for cartoon cute sake let's make it like a little mustache and yeah they kind of they stick out quite a bit more honestly they don't droop that much yeah get more of that vibe and then they sort of get a little chonkier by the end and let's do the same thing we're just getting that gentle curve and then it looks nice and curvy from all angles okay that's cute and resolution is probably it's probably a little much let's bump that down okay so convert that to mesh I actually don't need the mirrored side anymore. Let's bring these together. Okay, so I'll start to merge these guys. Um, I need six to connect to. Um, actually, I probably, hang on, hang on, hang on. I made a fundamental error in moving too fast. Okay, so before I, before I did that, what I should have done is um, get my connection spot ready so I know which faces I'm using because yeah, it makes the most sense to use these, which will give me six. Um, and then you want to orient your curve first, so you're not like twisting it awkwardly. And then when you go to connect it, it's extremely easy. Okay, let's do that. Um, honestly, in this one, I don't even think that should be, that should probably just be four, to be honest, because realistically, I'm going to be using Getting a little dense here for a little snail. Uh, probably resolve some of that after, but because mm, it's like it's kind of falling between these two faces. I don't really want to move this one up or down. I don't know. Maybe I will leave it at six. Actually, I changed my mind. Let's just kind of align more with that curve a teeny bit and then tilt it. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. That's fine. Let's just double check since I moved it. Okay. All right. That that's fine. That works. Uh, and then something else I like to do is to cut along the surface so then it's a little bit easier okay something like that yeah that works I uh, can also just relax it a teeny bit. Sometimes that helps. Uh, I'll just do this instead, actually. Just want to make sure I'm not getting like a weird collapse where any of these are hooking up and there's like a smooth transition from every area. See, that's going in a teeny bit here. Just make sure you have a smooth transition. Okay, that works. And then it's also got a little... Uh, so I'm just scaling it in a tiny bit so the it reads to go out and then I'm just gonna do that and actually I'm just gonna you know what let's uh, smooth the whole thing yeah that's that's fine let's do that that works that's relatively simple and then let's connect this guy and do the same thing Yeah, uh, this one I don't really have a problem with. I am going to 
put another loop around though just for the texture might uh, I'm gonna do like a uh, emission uh, shaded texture for this I have a, the image prepared ahead of time and sometimes the shading works better if you have these holding loops and also if this was an animation context you would definitely want this like holding loop because like you always want to reinforce um, angle changes uh, on both sides right so if I have this reinforcement here a lot of people might miss the one around the base but this will cause texture stretching if you don't have it in a traditional animation pipeline so kind of regardless it's good to have and also uh, deformation for rigging will work a lot be better with this extra loop so generally you just always across the board regardless of what you're modeling for you want to have it and then I want to do the same thing here Cool. That's cute. I might, you know what, I might actually just stick like one more for the same reason I just mentioned to catch, because uh, I want to put like a little bit of shadow there, but I don't want it to go too far down, so that'll stop it. And then, okay, this might be excessive. Sloop. Let's just pull this around a bit and then pull that down kind of space that out a little bit okay so that's connected let's check the front okay now we can start checking the size yeah that's cute I like the I like that bulbousy shape now I got that roundness that I wanted and it kind of splays out he's got his footy and he's very sluggy shaped um yeah I like the shape of that nose that's cute okay so that's working pretty well um I do have I don't think I, yeah, there we go. Material, just for funsies. Put it on him. Actually, okay, we'll, we'll deal with materials after. Let's let's just finish the modeling here. So, um, okay, for the shell, we're gonna, first of all, don't forget to save your work uh, when you're finishing a section and starting a new one. Uh, just generally good practice. Kind of like a little, give yourself a little checkpoint. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, all right, so there's a lot of components to this shell. First of all, first question, is this density what I want? It looks a little, let's see, what's two look like? Yeah, you know what, two actually does work better. It's a little bit less heavy, and then the resolution going around, I think is, it's a little heavy here, but yeah, I think it's fine. Okay, so. There's a few major... Okay, I don't really need these right now. Uh, let's just disable them. Boop. Okay, so there's a few major areas here. There's a, this crashy bit. That's a that's an issue. There's the way it connects here. That's an issue. And then this is open, and I just generally need to like fuse this around. So I'm going to need to fuse it over here. And when I do that... Uh, yeah, I'll probably have to blend these together somehow. Uh, yeah, let's focus on fusing first. Let's start from this point. Okay, so... First of all, I need the same amount on both sides, and they're, like, staggered, which is inconvenient, but that's okay. Uh, and I'm going to use... It's tricky. You know what? You know what? Actually, hang on. Before, before I convert it, let's go back one more time. Okay, I just want to. Yeah, there we go. Because then I can blend these two loops together, and then I still have that point there for extra holding. Okay, yeah. Again, don't forget to check your rotations before you convert to mesh. Okay, something I'm forgetting. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Uh, this is the loop I'm going to fuse. Probably not up until this point. I might, it looks like it twisted a bit, uh, but that's fine. This is going to need a lot of manual work in that area anyway, so it doesn't super matter. But yeah, definitely it's going to fuse with these two, so let's just mark them so it's easier to see. And honestly, this is just manual. Go one at a time, and just don't get your loops confused. Uh, I want to change the snapping to vertex because I would like to snap to that point. Where they are isn't too important right now. That's definitely something that can be fixed later. 
And this starts to come out a bit. Let's grab this guy here. And yeah, I'm okay with this. This is going to create a try here, and that's fine. Because this is where uh, it's going to fuse. And I'm a little um, spacey when I'm talking, because I'm trying to talk and model at the same time. Uh, I apologize. Okay, so get rid of that, get rid of this. Uh, now that I have my interior established, I don't need those anymore, because I know where I'm going to fuse it. This is a whole, this is a whole thing. We're going to deal with that after. We're just going to keep going in this direction. Actually, I didn't need to. I could have just done this. I didn't need to triangulate this. Okay. That works for me. Okay, cool. That's cute. And I actually need to have auto smooth on for that to work. And then it makes it easier to see too where I've done already. And I just want to space that out a bit more. Yeah, space that out a bit more. Whoop. Okay, I see what's happening. Just gotta do that part separately because there's extra faces tripping it up inside. That's fine. Just kind of delete as we go. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna stop here and we're gonna keep going in this direction. Uh, kind of even, even on both sides. Get these to match up, and I'm trying to make them like evenly spaced too. Trying to adjust both sides, not necessarily one over the other, but both at the same time. And put this here. Alright. Okay, that's pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, and then that's kind of my stopping point. So uh, let's just put this here. We'll just merge these together. And that can be kind of my my stopping point there. Another reason too to mark these sharp is just like it makes it easier to see in the topology like which edges you actually need to group together or merge together. So that's all merged. And now I can start to delete the extra faces. I don't need any more. Okay, yeah, this is <laughs> this is always the worst spot for spirals. This is just going to take a bit of noodling. All right, we can go a little bit further. OK, so this is where it starts to break apart again. I think I'm just going to slide this over, honestly. Yeah. And then, OK, so I could definitely use more. Uh, this is when it starts to get a little hairy. Yeah, this is when it starts to get a little hairy. Okay, so uh, I'm going to need to start merging points together because it's getting a little silly. And I definitely, you know what, I'm still going to, I'm just going to leave that marked. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Okay, we can always fix that after. It's easy. Yeah. I want to start adding clips because I don't want to carry this all the way in. That's that's going to be really dense and annoying to deal with. So we're gonna we're gonna do something else with these. They don't need to carry all that distance. It's fine. And then these two. It's hard to see there. I almost merged it to the wrong point. Okay. And then okay, we're losing too much volume. Just pull that back out and then okay so you're gonna hear a lot of and then and so's in my videos I'm sorry <laughs> it's just a, a side effect of, of talking while modeling um, brains like do I have the next thing to say yet and then I'm like no I don't I don't actually have the next thing to say yet we're just gonna keep going 
Okay. <laughs> so I, I don't want to cut off too much of these. Well, okay. I'm just trying to figure out a spot. Okay. So if I cut right here, <laughs> let's cut that off and this and that. Okay. There. So this is going to be a separate mess to deal with. <laughs> don't worry, about, don't worry about that after. Let's figure this, this out first. Okay. So get rid of that. Can I get rid of this? Yes. Can I get rid of this? Yes. Can I get rid of this? Uh-huh. And this? Yes. This? Yes. This? Yep. Okay. All right. That actually wasn't too bad. Um, merge these together. What about this guy? Yes. We're starting to get close to the edge. Okay. That's actually not too bad. Okay. So now that we have this little spiral here, and it's also like pretty dense, there's like a decent amount of density in this little spiral. Okay. So I want this, these coming to a point would probably be good. Um, yeah, that would probably be good. And this is going to have to change orientation a little bit. Okay. Hmm. And I definitely need to have these come together because that's too, too much resolution happening in that spot. And let's do the same thing here just to try and like, okay, there we go. So this is going to be Oh, okay. I see what happened here. Okay. So I'm using the wrong edge. That's fine. I need this edge actually. So I need to pull these out. And honestly, same thing. Yeah, that's okay. And then I need to add Hmm. I definitely want to have this come up. I added something there that I didn't mean to. Okay, let's put that there. And then do I even, I don't even know if I need that, honestly. I probably don't. I could probably get rid of that too. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that gets the, the thing away from the thing, which is good. Because that's what I wanted. All right, and then this probably comes into, eh, you know what, I'll let, I'll let that be the last point. And let's puff this back up because I lost a bunch of volume. Well, I, I would say I didn't have volume in that place to begin with, I would argue. Okay, get this oriented. And you know what, E and F to get it to snap to the other side. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. All right. So just trying to organize those. Okay, now I've got a clearer idea here. So if I put this, that's fair. I'm not surprised I have an odd, an odd amount. Um, okay, so hmm, I'm not crazy about this actually. I'm not not a huge fan. I kind of want this to go this way, and this to go here, and this to go there. That's a little better. Okay, I just, I wanted that, that buffer edge to support all the way around. And honestly, I could probably do that here too. And then it's the same on both sides. And then I have that loop to support because that's technically where one of my sharp edges is, one of my anchor edges. Again, if those terms are confusing, I have other videos explaining. Ah, you know what? Here we go. This is, this is why right here. Let's try. Oh, wait, no, I have, I got two. Okay. Let's just, let's just mesh length this. Um, okay. So I've got an odd number of open phases. Uh, and this one is even. Okay, so let's let's clean this up first because the odd number, I mean, again, if this is for a game, I wouldn't really care that there's a try, uh, but just for the sake of correctness, just for funsies, we'll try to fix it. Okay, so first off, let's reorient it. 
Let me orient this to be rounder. And then this guy was also kind of messed up. That was a tiny hiccup. Excuse me. Oh, I didn't grab all the way. That's fine. Okay, so I think it makes the most sense to do the part around the snail now. So I'm just going to isolate this to make it easier. And I'm going to pull this down a little bit. At this point, I'm kind of like dropping realism a little bit and just kind of going with what looks cute. And I'm just trying to like make it more or less match his body, uh, regardless of... I don't, I don't know how it would actually be for snails, but okay. So there's, mm, the resolution's fine. It's fine. Okay. Uh, I just, uh, I don't like the spot here. It's a little, but you also can't see it, so it's, it's probably fine. Probably just overthinking it. Um, because I don't want to add one, because otherwise I gotta add two. Oh wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's a reason why I pulled that up. Yeah. Okay. Let's just do that instead. I also want it to be like relatively cute. Actually, you know what? Yeah, okay. Just the one. Just the one. I'll fix the other stuff later. Um, I'm also sorry. I'm talking out loud and not fully explaining my thoughts, but you'll you'll see what happens um, as I do it. Uh, okay. Let's just start patching this hole. Uh, this is messy. Uh, yeah, merge these together, push that down. Honestly, this might be like another, well, is that, oh, hang on, what does that even look like? Because it just kind of, it's just sort of like, you don't even really see it. It's, because it's like the end of this flares out a lot, almost. It's almost like it does this thing even, which is pretty cute, so I'll accept that. Um, yeah, it seems like it does this, and then this part that was... Actually this, I don't need to, I can just clear, clear sharp, there we go. Okay, so considering it's just like a bloop, and these kind of all come together, let's start collapsing these. Hang on, hang on, before I just blindly delete things. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, no. I separated it from the other side, so it's fine. We thought of this ahead of time. And I'm just going to keep collapsing into the diagonal because that's going to be the easiest way to get rid of these. Okay, and... Okay, so it's trying to get a little little messy right here. We'll just delete these and get rid of all this and that and that. Okay, this I need to keep because... Hang on. Yeah, okay. So that I need to keep because that's the inside of the shell. See, and now that I've deleted those extra ones, it's a lot easier to see. Okay, so yeah, I would like to have... Uh, I don't really like how that connects. Not a fan. Not a fan. It's a little derpy looking. Okay. But let's continue this sharp edge here. Over here. Yeah, there we go. Because now I'm kind of getting that shape. Alright, so this direction is not quite correct. I need to aim this more up this way. And I'm probably creating spiraling. Uh, but that's okay. Because it's literally a spiral. Um gonna be hard to avoid. Uh, actually, that's fine. That doesn't bother me. That's okay. It's not as bad as I thought. Okay, so I do have the try over here. All right, I am gonna correct this try. Uh, like I said, if this was a game, uh, I wouldn't really care that much, but I'm gonna do it just to show how I would do it if I did need to do it, because um, it seems tricky. So there's a few different options. Um, option one, I can push it into an open space. Uh, or like an open edge. Option two, I can connect them. Um, I don't need that. And, uh, okay, kind of doing both. Again, again, talking and modeling at the same time. Okay. Okay, that's cute. All right. All right. Okay, 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 okay. So, uh, these two would go together. I'm not worried about them. We just do something like this to get rid of these guys. 
Um, I have an, uh, wait, hang on, 17 non-manifold, so we have an odd number. That's good to know. Oh yeah, that guy there. Check that sharp again. 12 non-manifold. Okay, so, all right, it is an even number, so we get the try here and the try here. Okay, the easiest way, so let's deal with this guy first, because I need to get him out of this area. So let's collapse this. Yeah, because that's a, that's a nice number to have in the middle anyway. So that works. Okay, and then from there, let's see, this is kind of a lot. Let's just merge that together. Merge this together. And I'm just tr slowly pushing this try away from that area. So I definitely could stand to use another set of resolution. I was actually just going to push it somewhere else before, but I could stand to use more resolution in this area. So let's just space that out. Here we go. Okay, so that fixes that. Smooth in these. All right, cool. And we got this going over here. And I don't need that. I don't need that. And there we go. Ta-da. Try fixed. This is a six-pointed edge. I don't care about those. Okay, so we just have 12, 12 non-manifold. That's good. Um, and I'm going to slap a little solidify on this guy. Clear out the scale so I don't get any weird results. And let's just see what this would look like. Okay, I want to like exaggerate this a little bit more in some areas. It's kind of I'm kind of losing it a little bit. And I want to just make sure I don't want to have it penetrating. Kind of want to have it like a little bit floating above. Um, if it's penetrating a teeny bit, that's okay, but I'd rather have it kind of yeah. All right. And let's just make a push that in a little bit. Let's just pull this out. And honestly, like these can kind of visually collide. Um, that does not bother me because that's kind of what the real snail looks like anyway. It does does the same thing. So that's cool. Do that. Again, I can do the same thing here where it's just sort of pulling this out. Again, subdivision's not being added to this model, so it's handled differently. That would be a separate process that you would do after, but a lot, you're, most of the time your starting point is going to be very similar, regardless of your subdividing or not, because regardless of subdivision, you need a good basis for your model. Okay, cool. So now let's check my proportions on everything. So let's poof in a little bit over here, and I need it to poof a bit more out here. Um, check this side. Easier too sometimes if you look without. Uh, not that. I meant to do this. And a lot of the time what I'll do too if I've got a round surface that's just a little wobbly I'll just pull it out a little too far and then I'll smooth it back in. Smooth this out. Smooth this. That. Yeah, that works. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That works. Uh, let's add a little bit more volume here. I think I lost a tiny bit. Just a smidgen, just a smidge. Check the top too, that'll give me information. Uh, let's pull a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, this is a little bit, and then let's, oh yeah, we could round this off too. It's a little, it's a little intense. Intense looking. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay, now that's nice and smooth. Um, this could probably be smoothed out a teeny bit as well. And yeah, do this a little bit. It's good to check from the sides because that's the best indicator of like how smooth your surface actually is. It's hard to look. If you just look straight on, it's like very hard to tell. So if you go at an angle, you can get a better idea. And what's most important is like those bridge points that are on like the outer edge of my silhouette. That's definitely the most important thing. Because like, especially with like the emission shader I'm going to be using, it's pretty forgiving. 
of a lot of mistakes. So, you know what? Honestly, it's a little, a little poofy. It's a little poofy. Let's just bring this down a little more. Uh, another thing I do if I just want to overall reduce volume is I'll smooth once and then I'll use control plus to expand once and then I'll smooth once more. And that generally keeps it uh, without, because a lot of the time if you just smooth one area you'll get like the nice smooth and then they'll kind of be like a raised edge where, you, where it wasn't so it kind of avoids that. Um, I may want a holding edge here for the pattern, the texture, but we'll see. I'll see what it looks like because I think what will happen is it'll kind of um, the gradient will expand further into this shell area, which could look very nice, but we'll see. Um, yeah, cool. I'm happy with that. That's a, that's a cute little snail boy. All right. Uh, in terms of the solidify though, I don't want to keep, I don't want to keep um, it all solidified. That's a lot of extra faces for no reason. So what I like to do, duplicate it off, convert it to a mesh, select your solidify edge, and then Control I, inverse select, delete those faces. Come back to your original object, delete the solidify. Whoa. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on, one second. I, uh, there we go. I deleted the wrong face. Okay, there we go. And come back here, delete it, and then join it. And then I can merge by distance. And yeah, I got 12 verts merged, so that's good. And now I can just take this inside edge and I'm just gonna do something like this. So if we do see inside it, um, it'll just be a uh, texture. Uh, let's say clear, clear sharp. And let's grid fill that. Okay, there we go. There we go. So now if we like happen to see under here, you still see like the interior of the shell and we're not using a bunch of extra faces uh, to get the same visual result. So, and I actually don't, I don't need this to be sharp. That's, that's not necessary. Okay, cool. There we go. Snail, snail good. Snail, snail good. Um, let's just name these for fun. Snail. And now I don't need these anymore. Let's go into texturing real quick. So I like to set UV editor here, open this for properties. And then, okay, so in order to do gradient shading, we're gonna use Jackie UVs. I want to fake the lighting. I'm just gonna roughly place them into position for now. Okay, so um, all right. So let's think about where I want shadow. Uh, I definitely want shadow here, and I want shadow here or along the bottom. Doing the bottom manually might be easier. Mm, I might just have to do both manually, honestly. I do like this mid-tone color. Okay, yeah, I'll go with that. And okay, so let's start adding the bottom shading. Select these faces. And you wanna have uh, UV sync selection on because I wanna pull the other faces. I want it to be a smooth transition. Yeah, that's decent. I might... Hmm. You know what? I am actually going to add an extra edge. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to bevel it. Whoops. Just because I want the shading to work a better. Actually, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that edge there. Normally, um like I said, if you were getting rid of tries, you wouldn't leave something like this, but I've noticed with the specific style of shading, if you do leave it like that, it'll look nicer. Okay, so let's draw, do that again. See what happens. Um, yeah, that's cute. I like that. And then, you know what, this is, uh, you know what, okay. All right, I changed my mind again. We're just going to carry this straight through. Because I don't really like 
what it's doing. We'll just do that. Okay. Keep keep flip flopping. That's okay. One more time. One more time. Yeah, that's cute. All right, that works better. That works better. And then around the shell, shading wise, it would be a lot better if I have like some kind of loop. So honestly, maybe I might do that. And just kind of, again, this is not a model I would use for animation. I just want to just be very clear about that. Uh, not not how I would do it, but this is it. This works very well for this specific shading method, so that's what I'm gonna do. Cool. And no, 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 not that. That's not that. Um, hmm. I need this to go just a little bit further, so let's do that and do that instead and then do that. Okay, there, just so I can get it to like wrap around more. And then honestly, okay, cause it's like, it's kind of shaded throughout this whole way, honestly. So, all right. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, yeah, I mean, I might as well include that in it, because it is. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Right at here. Actually, this is probably still going to technically be quadded in the end, but that's, that's cool. And then let's merge this up here. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. That works. And then let's just take this and pull that down a little bit. So it's not going to be as intense and pull this down a bit. Yeah. Space that out. Kind of smooth that. Then I can pull this down a smidgen. All right, cool. All right, so now I can select these, make that easier, and okay, let's see if I if I take the whole thing down. Uh, I don't mind that, but what I'm gonna do is shrink my selection, pull that down, so there's a more extreme shadow right under there, and then I'm gonna make it so, this, so these pro these ones are pulled down more than these ones. So I can get more of a gradient in my in my gradient, so to speak. So yeah, that works. Uh, I just want that little bit of shadow. Um, that works for me. Okay, so now let's add some shadow. I'm wondering if I want to go all the way around or not. Ah, it might look weird if I don't. Let's just try that. Ah, you know what? I don't mind that. It kind of makes it look a little more connected. And also gives light more of an impression there. Uh, I, I like it. I like it. Okay, so let's try the same thing here. <laughs> Yeah, that's cute. I like that. Okay, cool. And then let's select the bottom of these. Now this one's already been pulled down, so we won't pull that one down again, but just pull these down to match. And then let's do the same thing here. Again, already have those down. Pull that down. Yep, that's cute. And then we're going to do the opposite on the top. Uh, yes, these ones. And pull these up. That's probably too, too far, too far. Oh, uh, you know what? You know what? Instead of pulling the whole thing, I'm just going to pull the center line. Because then I get more of that center color gradient. I don't want it to be, like, too extreme. Uh, but I can probably do it here, just because of the way it's oriented. Yeah, that works. Cool. And then let's add a bit more highlight to the noggin. I might be selecting, well, I might be selecting too far. We'll see. Yeah, just adding a little bit of light. Maybe lighten this one up a little bit. Lighten this one up a tiny bit. Yeah, that's cute. Okay. 
And then I want to do the same thing here. Whoop, not that. Um, debating if I want to go all the way around again or not. If I just pull the down part, uh, you know what? In this case, I think I'm going to go all the way around. Yeah, I like it better to go all the way around on those parts. Pull that out, and then just to give the ends an extra bit of highlight, let's just pull these up. So they just, oh, not that far. Not that far. Yeah, there we go. Just a little pop of color. That's cute. Uh, good little snail boy. Okay. Yeah, I feel pretty good about the body. Uh, maybe add maybe a pop of color light. Pop of light on the tail. And I don't like how dark that is. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Just a teeny, teeny little hint of light. That's cute. <laughs> that is that's cute. <laughs> okay. Now the shell. So let's just make this a little bigger because I like. Yeah, I like that. Being all dark. Let's take this bottom part and pull it down even further. Yeah, I like that edge there. And then let's take this here, pull that down too. That's that looks neat. And then it's a little it's a little extreme though. There, let's exaggerate that a bit. So the fall off is a bit nicer. Okay, and I can now select. Okay, I'm going to have to manually select. Not that. Okay, there we go. And probably not that one because it's already probably quite dark. Yes, cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, maybe not. Ah. You know what? Let's just scale these down to make that. The, to reduce the contrast of that shadow, we're going to scale down. And then let's add a bit of dark right here as well. Uh, okay, manual selection. And probably not quite that far there. Cool. And then we're going to add little highlights. Okay, you know what? Uh, let's, we'll do, since this is such a smooth surface, it's better to go one and then scale out and then do it again. And then it's more of a soothe soft gradient. And yeah, I'll do the same thing here. Pull that up, pull that up. And here as well. And honestly, I could probably pull these ones up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's cute. Cool. Um, I kind of wish the shell was overall more contrasty, though. Whoa, uh, not that far. That's too far. Yeah. Okay. And one last thing I'm going to add. You know what? I really like how dark it was, though. I really like, I really like how dark that is. Like this. Well, okay. All right. All right. Not that far. Not that far. Noodling it a lot. Okay. That's cute. All right, okay. So let me just look at this again really quick. One thing I noticed, I like these little stripies. I'm going to add two. Okay, we're going to save. Save up. Save as. Two or three. Kind of like the idea of like, okay, first of all, first of all, uh, change this to be surface. Because it, if it's like dee 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 dee. And then d d d d And then let's have these kind of come from the same point, actually. That'll be a little bit cuter, I think. Because then it's kind of like going out. Whoops. Yeah, something like something like that, something like that. Okay. Hey, stop, stop, stop. All right. Now I've got that in place. Let's just start cutting. And I'm going to mark seam on this one actually, because I don't want this to be sharp, but I do need it to be a separate seam. Seam, not that part.
seam. And I'm kind of crisscrossing my lines a little bit, which is fine. That'll happen. Technically, since this is not a moving object at all, um, this wouldn't really matter. But I don't know. Maybe I'll fix it just for fun. Okay, delete that. I, once again, don't need those. And then I actually don't like where I put that, so I'm just going to do a new one and have it go to like here okay uh wouldn't matter too much but i'll just clean it up a teeny bit because for fun for fun probably gonna leave them as tries though to be honest um, it doesn't it really doesn't matter uh, in this context so just kind of showing how you would go about fixing because uh, yeah you want to respect those new edges that you just made and if stuff is happening uh, breaking apart here well, like I just broke that a little bit um, you can just merge in your UVs so you don't do that and we'll just make that go straight across just kind of pushing that pattern further away from these new anchor edges I've made, which are defined by where this pattern needs to go. Okay, so odd number doesn't surprise me. I know there's tries and stuff, but that's fine. It's mostly, it's stable and it's like mostly cleaned up, so. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, cool. So now that I have these, uh, let's change it to seam selection. And uh, make sure you're in face mode if you don't have an extra edge in between. And I want these to... I want to project these from view because I want to do these again. And I'm going to do these pretty dark. Yeah. That's cute. I like that. And uh, yeah, there we have it. Little snail boy. Little, little lad little snail lad. Uh, I will make a line art of him and I will post in the description uh, this image if you want to repeat this process and follow along. Um, I might also include this um, this image here, this gradient. Um, might as well, why not? Uh, in case you feel like using the same colors, obviously do what you want. But yes, this is how you model a little snail. Um, have a good day everybody. If you liked what I did, uh, like and subscribe. More videos like this, uh, and I post uh, whenever I feel like. Uh, bye, y'all.